All right, welcome back to Better Kansas City. And we know eyesight can change as we age. And the immediate thought is you want to get glasses, glasses or LASIK, uh, but there's something else to consider that could be affecting your vision. We have Matthew or Dr. Matthew Snagowski from Sabatez Eye Centers here to explain the effects and the fix for aging eyelids. This is not this is not anything I've ever heard about before, but when we get to talking about it, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit about this oculo is it oculo oculoplastic Plastic surgery. surgery there it is yeah and talk about what that is, what that is and how it really helps uh, fix some of the eyelid problems people can have later in life sure sure so I'm an oculoplastic surgeon um, what that is is it's a subspecialty out of ophthalmology it's an additional two years of training mm -hmm. um, and so I don't do any eye surgery okay. I strictly do eyelid surgery orbit surgery and tear duct surgery um, so my day-to-day -day practice can be anything from doing uh, orbit surgery uh, a lot of folks will fracture the bones around their eyes Okay. Um, sometimes so that's those inside that part of your skull, then around it, the, like the exactly eye, the orbital whatever. Yeah, exactly the okay. orbital bones. Yeah. So some of the uh, kind of the bony cave that the eyeball lives yeah, in. We can kind of see an example. Um, of that here's here, an sure. example. Uh, if you look at the uh, photos on the uh, top, this is a gentleman uh, who was repaired elsewhere. Mm -hmm. um, basically, all that was wrong was that the orbital plate was put in the wrong spot. Mm. And so if you look the difference between the top and the bottom, the only thing I did was actually remove the original plate that was put in the wrong spot and put a new plate in. And for this gentleman, uh, initially he had terrible double vision. He had a lot of irritation of his eye. Wow. We were able to fix all that just by adjusting the plate. So just by, by doing that fix, those fixes that you're talking about, I mean, that's that's helping his vision out as Correct. well. So, I mean, it, it it's it's not a, a visual surgery, so to speak, but it's improving vision. Correct, exactly. Okay. And, and probably the most common thing that I see in my practice is quote unquote droopy eyelids. Yeah. So Let's patients come in and, and mention that they have droopy eyelids. Um, for me, probably two thirds are ones that affect vision. Mm -hmm. Maybe a third or so are cosmetic. And is this an example um, of the droopy eyelids here's here? Here's an example. So if you look at the uh, image on the top, this is somebody who has a droopy eyelid. Mm -hmm. The three main causes are sometimes the muscle stretch out. This was this patient. And you can see just by tightening that muscle, really can open the eyes, help her see better. Um, other reasons, we can get excess eyelid skin uh -huh. that has to be adjusted as well. Sometimes the brows will start to droop and can affect the vision. Okay. Um, so there's different surgical yeah. fixes. Obviously, if the muscles stretch out, there's a couple ways to tighten the muscles. If there's extra skin, we can tighten that. Oh, and wow, um, look what you've done here. They've had this, that had the droopy, droopy eyes underneath there, and it looks like you've smoothed that out in a way, right? Exactly. So lower eyelids are going to almost always be cosmetic, but here's a nice example of somebody who had that droopy kind of hooded yeah. upper eyelid, didn't really like the aesthetics of the lower eyelid, and so we can adjust both the extra skin on the upper eyelid, and then for the lower eyelid, usually I go through the inside of the eyelid, wow. trim down the fat pads, and then we have to do something to tighten the skin, either with a laser or chemicals. How does this different, or how is it different from, from plastic surgery? Sure, sure, that's a great question. So the difference between an oculoplastic surgeon is I did two years of fellowship training, and literally I work on about four centimeters of the face. Okay. As opposed to the general plastic surgeons who really do head-to-toe plastic surgery, um, there's plastic surgeons out there that do a ton of eyelids and, mm -hmm. and they're fabulous eyelid surgeons. Um, but that's all I do is, is eyelid and orbit surgery. And just real quickly before we gotta let you go, um, I think it's just me, I, I had LASIK done 15 years ago, it's v I was extremely nervous about it because I think you're nervous when you have any kind of procedures done around your eyes, given obviously how important they are. Um, what would you say to somebody who you know is thinking about this or has seen it on TV and is thinking about it, you know, uh, don't, how would you tell them not to be nervous about going in for something like this? Yeah, um, you know, I think first and foremost, you have to have a, you know, trust and confidence in your surgeon. Mm -hmm. The nice thing is for us, I do most of these under IV sedation, but we can also do a lot of this under general anesthesia. Wow. So um, really can make the patient as relaxed as they'd like to be. Um, and so really keep them comfortable and, and they can have a fabulous result. All right, Doc, well, I learned quite a bit today. I want to thank you for being here. Uh, there are special offers uh, if you book a free consultation with oculofacial specialist at Sabatez Eye Centers. They're right here on your screen and also on the website. Make sure to mention KCTV5 when making your appointment. And to book that free consultation or take advantage of those special offers, you can call 913-261-2020 or toll free 800 742 or you can also go online to sabateseye.com.